Hey, welcome everyone. In this video, I'll be reviewing the Fire Stick TV, the 2020 model that supports up to 1080p. Let's face it, this model is still very relevant nowadays because a lot of people still only have a 1080p TV or perhaps their internet speeds aren't fast enough to stream 4K content or it's also possible that maybe they have a monthly allowance of how much data they can use per month from the internet service provider because after all, 4K content does consume more data than 1080p content. Now keep in mind there are two versions of this media player. The version I'm reviewing has the second generation Alexa remote, which also allows the controlling of AV systems, soundbars, and TV power and volume control, depending if those devices are compatible with the remote. The other version of this media player is the exact same thing, exact same media player, it's just it can't control power and volume of your home theater devices, including your TV. The version that cannot control the home theater systems is called the light version. The light version retails for $50 Canadian or $30 US. The version that can control your home theater devices using IR signal is $60 Canadian or $40 US. Let's start with the remote design. It's simple and small, but it's effective at getting the job done. Button placement is well done and all the essential controls you'll need are easy to reach. It's incredibly light, but not the most comfortable remote. I have nothing bad to say about it, this is kind of a personal thing, but it just feels incredibly flat mainly because the body's thin. I wish it could have had more predominant groove at the back for your fingers. Aside from basic media and navigation controls, there is a dedicated button with a microphone at the top of the remote. The remote itself is powered by two AAA batteries included in the box. There is also a Fire TV remote app available for smartphones if you really do want to use it. Let's switch to the Fire TV stick. It's rather small at about 8.5 centimeters, not including the HDMI part that plugs into your TV, with the Amazon logo appearing on the top. One end has the port to connect HDMI onto your TV or monitor, and the other side is a port for micro USB power, unfortunately not USB-C, even though everything nowadays should be USB-C. Surprisingly, there's no factory reset button on the device. I doubt it would ever be needed, but it's still surprising. The power wire is five feet long, which is pretty standard for a media streamer. Depending on how your TV is set up, if it's too hard to connect the media player to your TV, Included in the box is an HDMI extender, which will add about 10.5 centimeters of extension. A very nice touch from Amazon. This media player does support Wi-Fi 5 and not Wi-Fi 6, which is not a big deal since it's mainly designed for 1080p, so you won't need insane Wi-Fi 6 speeds to this device. If you're not sure what Wi-Fi 5 or 6 is, I have another video explaining what that is. A link to that is in the video description. If your Wi-Fi signal is not that great, there is a separately sold Ethernet adapter which you can buy from Amazon. It also supports Bluetooth 5.0, so you can connect to a gaming controller if you want to, which I'll explain and show later on. You can also connect a keyboard or mouse, and even, yes, Bluetooth headphones so you can have it for private listening to not disturb anyone around you. The media player has eight gigabytes of internal storage and out of the box, after a major update, you'll have about 4.56 gigs available to install apps onto. I'm not gonna get into specifications about the processor and RAM because that's kind of useless for a media streamer. What's important here is real world performance, which I will be demoing for you and trying to push it to its limit. The media player itself and the remote only come in a black color. There are no color options available. So let's switch over to the software side of things. What you're seeing right now is the main home page. It's incredibly responsive and really easy to navigate. So in terms of responsive speed, if I were just kind of scroll down all the way, uh, for such a cheap media player stick, as you can see, it's incredibly responsive. I love how fluid it, it behaves. Um, going over a little bit to the left on the middle tier line, you actually have profiles. Libraries basically stuff you marked as your watch list. This is primarily focused around content on from the Amazon Prime Video app, not so much stuff like say your Netflix watch list. So it's pretty limited there, but it's still at least available. Uh, the home page is catered towards pretty much everything. So it'll be a combination of everything that you use almost and some additional stuff. So for example, you have popular movies and TV shows from your subscriptions. Uh, primarily, again, a lot of those things you'll see is primarily focused on Amazon Prime Video content. You have sponsored content, um, recently used apps, which is stuff I've installed, featured apps and games, and then Prime content again, recently watched Prime content, Prime content, Netflix, Prime, 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 Prime. You get the idea. So here's the thing that's kind of bad about this media streamer is that there's too much Prime content kind of shoved in your face. I understand that this is an Amazon product, but if you were to buy, say, a Google TV device, Google doesn't kind of throw their products in your face this much, for example. And there's also sponsored content. So, for example, as you saw those apps that were sponsored uh, right over here, 
you know, they also ha they have this and then they have sponsored banners that might randomly appear. So advertisements in here. So I'm not too fond that you paid for a media streamer to only have ads in your face. Um, they're not too excessive, but it is kind of annoying. The find feature is basically searching throughout everything. It could be categories for TV shows, movies, as well as apps. So it kind of searches everything. It kind of gives you an idea of what to look for. Um, and of course you can just hit right here, but let's, let's give the, you know, Amazon smart system a try by pressing and holding the mic button on the remote. Asphalt 8. So as you can see, even though it's a game, it was able to find it. So it's not just limited to uh, media content, but let's, let's give something else a try. The Patriot Act. So there you can see, now I'm searching for media content, is able to find it within a Netflix, even though it's a Netflix content and not uh, an Amazon Prime content, which is great. So the services works pretty well, but you can also control some smart home products, for example. Turn on the dining room lights. And then of course you can't see it, but my lights in the dining room have now turned on. Switching over, we do have live recommended content. So these are apps that are catered to live services. So Global News is here in Canada. Um, it is easily available. Now in terms of apps, so let's kind of skim over it quickly. I'm not going to go into this too deep, but there's an app store. Uh, it's not the largest catalog around, but it's pretty decent. It has the main primary streaming apps we would want. It has Netflix, Hulu, uh, if you're in the US, of course, uh, YouTube, Apple TV, um, and other Prime videos, which is pre-installed, of course, and other video content streaming services. The apps that are available will vary depending on where you live, of course, so just keep that in mind. Now you can sideload apps because this is running Android 9 as per the Amazon Fire Stick TV uh, developer page with it running Fire Stick TV OS on top of it. So it's just a skin on top of Android. So because it's running Android, you can sideload Android apps, but it's not guaranteed to work. So for example, I tried to sideload the PlayStation Remote Play app. Uh, the first thing you have to do is sign into your PlayStation account and you get this error code, so it doesn't work. Um, I would have tried to install Stadia, but you can't pair the Stadia controller to the media streamer itself. I tried to sideload the Xbox app, it doesn't work, it just crashed. So your mileage may vary, but yes, theoretically you can sideload apps if you really wanted to. It's just a matter of will it be compatible with this media streamer or not? You'll have to kind of experiment and find out. I do have another video explaining how to sideload apps on a Amazon Fire TV device. A link to that is in the video description. But going over generally like the most popular apps, like say Netflix, Netflix is a generally heavy app. It's usually a little bit slow to load depending on the media streamer and how it's designed. Uh, but you know, considering how cheap this media player is, the Netflix app loads pretty decently in terms of speed. Um, so let's just go here quickly. And you just have your plain old regular Netflix interface, but it works well and effective. Switching over to Prime Video, which of course is the, the main media app of this media streamer. It's incredibly fast and responsive. Not the best interface, but that's always been a prime video issue, but it does work, it does the job. So I won't be playing anything due to YouTube copyright rules, but I'm just kind of giving you an overview that the apps work fantastic. YouTube was kind of disappeared from Amazon Fire TV devices for a while. There was a spat Amazon had with Google, but it's back. The interface is pretty much the same user interface you would find on any uh, Google TV device for YouTube experience. It works fantastic, it plays quickly, um, and again, it does a job just as you expect it to. Now there are other services available that you can use like Disney Plus, which I don't have a subscription to, or Apple TV, which again, I don't have a subscription to. Um, if you're in the US, you have access to Hulu, of course. Now here's the thing about the Plex app. It retains the vanilla interface. Um, I've seen some other media streamers that have a very different looking interface for Plex. They don't work well. This is the vanilla interface. It works incredibly well. So here's some technical mumbo jumbo that you may or may not care about, but I just want to put it out there in case you're interested to know. This is a 1080p media streamer. It can play H.264, H.265, 720p and 1080p content and MP4 and an MKV file format just fine. It works splendid. And this is over my internal network. If you're playing any type of 4K content, it doesn't matter if the bitrate is high or the bitrate is low, it just will not play it at all, no matter what I've done in my testing. It doesn't matter if it's MKV, MP4 file format, it doesn't matter if it's H.264, H.265, it just simply cannot do it. I think it's because this media player is capped at 1080p, which is fine, 
but I try to get around this method by going into the settings. So this is where I'm gonna get kind of technical. And if you go to video quality and home streaming, I even adjusted it from maximum to 1080p um, high. Then it went to medium quality. It, it doesn't work no matter what. So even though I'm downscaling the content from 4K to 1080p, it doesn't work. So if you have any 4K content that you wanna stream on a 1080p TV, most likely this media streamer will not do it for you over Plex. Get into settings first and we'll go into gaming later and I'll explain why. Notifications is basically any notifications you might get, kind of like an alert, like, hey, the app you were downloading, installing is finally ready to use. Accounts and profiles, pretty standard and pretty self-explanatory, same with network. Display and sound is, again, self-explanatory. I did go in here just for the heck of it and tried to see if I can manually change the resolution to 4K. It is not possible. This is fully capped at 1080p, just in case you're wondering. Applications where you can manage your Amazon Photo Cloud Storage stuff, as well as say, for example, manage your apps if maybe they're taking up too much space on the media player itself. Equipment controls where you can add more devices like your soundbar, control the TV volume, as I'm doing right now. If it is compatible with your media player, this is where you would adjust them from. Remotes and Bluetooth. Okay, so, you can pair other Fire TV remotes if maybe your original one is damaged. Now here's some notes about the gaming controllers. You can pair an Xbox One controller, an Xbox Series X controller, and a PlayStation 5 DualSense controller to this media streamer. Um, it's just some important things to keep in mind is that if you do want to know how to connect either one to this media streamer, I have video links explaining how to get that done. Link to those in the video description. Now, for example, the Xbox Series X controller works exactly as you want it to. Um, a is to select, B is back, and the rest of the controls are like whatever. I'm controlling the screen right now with my Xbox Series X controller. The PlayStation 5 DualSense controller, there's something weird going on about it. So that's actually this wireless controller listed here. Um, on the PlayStation, X is to select and circle is to usually go back. On this media streamer, for some reason, square is to to select and X is to go back. The controller doesn't seem to work that well with this media player in the sense that the button mapping is all over the place. I've tried looking for options within this media streamer to adjust the button mapping. It's not possible, I couldn't find it. Preferences is great because it has parental controls which you can restrict uh, maybe rated R content for example. It can prevent your children from purchasing media if you know they don't want them to spend the money on your credit card and other general settings. Another important one that this is a 1080p media player, okay? So in data monitoring, you have the ability to cap your data. So I'm gonna be loading up Asphalt 8, which is a 3D game, primarily designed for mobile devices like Android cell phones, for example. It's a 3D game, and for a mobile 3D game, it's, it's pretty well done. It looks pretty darn good. Um, so it is available on this media stick, and I'm playing it with the Xbox Series X controller right now. Um, you can play with the Fire Stick TV controller, it is possible, it's just not as enjoyable. Um, but what I wanna show you is the performance of the media streamer itself. It's not the best looking game in terms of frame rate. It does tend to stutter. I'm not sure how to look on the camera, but here in, with my own eyes in person, it's not the best experience. It's certainly playable. You can, you can race around and play the game just fine, but uh, just not the best experience. If you wanna play a simple 2D game, then sure, you're better off doing that. So in terms of other information for home theater enthusiasts to know, well, basically, audio output and video output is fantastic, especially from services like, say, Amazon Prime, especially if the content is original Amazon Prime content that's recorded in 4K. The playback in 1080p is absolutely stellar. So some things to keep in mind for tech enthusiasts is that this media streamer does support Dolby Atmos, Dolby Digital, Dolby Digital Plus, and on the HDR side of things, it does support HDR10, HDR10+, and HLG. So what can I say is that overall, this is a pretty darn good media player, really worth the bang for buck. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that this was released in 2020. Also released in late 2020 was the Google Chromecast with well, remote control and Google TV skin overlay which doesn't have any advertisements on the main screen anywhere. Both media players are running Android at the core, but Fire TV has its own skin overlay, so the App Store is a little bit limited, whereas the Google Chromecast has access to the Google Play TV Store, which has a lot more apps available. So what you wanna get is really up to you. So that's pretty much it, my review. A pretty darn good product worth checking out. If you found this video useful, be sure to check out my social links in the description. Subscribe, hit the like button, it does help, and thanks for watching.